guys, welcome back to another whiteboard chat. And today I'm going to cover holding phases. So this was the other option on my previous story poll. And uh, this isn't this isn't the most science related topic. There is definitely some science within the topic, but it's not quite as sciencey as some of the other hormone topics and things like that that I've been covering. But nonetheless, it is an important topic and you just don't hear a lot of people talk about it. Um, there are some guys out there, guys and gals out there that talk about it. I like to call it letting the gains marinate, right? And that's, and it, that's a, that's the phrase I like to use, but it also does go beyond muscle growth. So I wanted to talk about, and that's typically the sense that you hear it. You typically hear it in the, um, context of muscle growth. However, I want to talk a little bit about potentially fat loss phase, um, health, um, just some different considerations between natural versus enhanced athletes and uh, go over those so people can make better, more lasting progress, I guess would be the, the way to put it. So what is a holding phase? Well, it's exactly as the name implies. It would be a phase in which you are holding. You're trying to maybe hold a body weight or you're working around maintenance calories, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So typically... Most of the time you're gonna hear this in reference to muscle growth, right? And that's the one that's gonna get the most attention for good reason. Now, there are a couple things to consider here. So we'll start with we'll start with the natural athlete first. When you grow muscle, right? When you're gaining, when you're in a calorie surplus and gaining weight, um, typically we get to a point where partitioning insulin sensitivity starts to go down, body fat accrual happens, we're you know putting on body fat. At some point there, we probably need to pull back because the you know ratio of muscle to fat gain or muscle to lean body mass gain is not very favorable. You're putting on more body fat than anything, and that's when uh, you know we're, we're getting to a very inefficient state, and um, the the progress is not going to be very good. It's just going to be more body fat, right? So, what do we want to do at that point? Well, you know, if you've had a pretty successful phase and you've gained a uh, decent amount of weight and this is maybe even a new high excuse me the biggest you've been it's a new high body weight with you know in term and also in relation to your current body composition should you slash calories right away uh, or should you hold well definitely make an argument in that you can hold now I think it's important to to keep in mind and I'm not going to make this a presentation about hypertrophy and different types of hypertrophy, but you do have different things that go into hypertrophy or making you look bigger, right? You have um, sarcoplasmic expansion, you know, where you get that kind of, uh, from from more of your like metabolic work and things that make the sarcolemma expand. So you have myofibrillar hypertrophy now, which normally would con contribute to more contractile proteins, so more people are, you know, getting stronger and all those things. Now, what you have to think about what happens when we're eating a lot of food, right? And we have more body fat and we have, you know, those adipose cells are swollen. It, it makes you look bigger, right? You have more fluid, you have more glycogen, you have more um, intramuscular triglycerides. All those things are making you look bigger. So if you've been steadily climbing, I like to use, so let's say weight has been, you know, steadily, steadily climbing, Maybe it's not straight, there's some bumps in there, right? Now, do you think everything within that curve is muscle growth? No. Uh, there's definitely, especially at first, if you're coming out of a leaner state, especially at first, you're gonna have glycogen, which brings in water, and you know, changing in electrolyte balance and all that jazz. So it's gonna move up maybe, it's gonna move up quicker, right? So really, it probably look more like it would probably look more like this, a little quicker, kind of slow down, okay? Now, once we get up to here, maybe this is our peak, this is a spot where I talked about that ratio of gains not very favorable and you might want to pull back. So we need to think about, okay, well, there's probably some water. There's obviously fat, adipose, you know, adipocytes that are expanded. Um, and there's muscle. Too, of course. Now, if we just slash everything down, um, we're, we're going to see 
you know, we're going to see it just go and fall off quick. And then it'll flatten back out. And, you know, it'll flatten back out and probably go, go down slower, right? Well, that's because we lost a lot of fluid. We lost glycogen. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of those things are falling off because you're reducing calories and you probably had some inflammation, general and systemic inflammation, things like that. So you see a quicker drop, which is normal. It doesn't matter if you do a holding phase, that's, that can happen regardless. However, if you have been climbing and climbing and climbing and then you all of a sudden drop very quickly, you might see a bigger decline initially than you really want to because that high body weight might not necessarily be lean body mass or, or muscle, right? So this is where the holding phase becomes beneficial. Uh, this is where we can acclimate to that weight, continue progressing in the gym at that weight, um, and make sure that we're solidifying that progress, okay? So that's kind of the premise, you know, that's the premise behind the holding phase for muscle growth. <clears throat> and that will help us make sure that we are you know, like I said, getting used to that new body weight, making sure that we're able to hold that body weight for a while. And it's, it wasn't just a, a big burst in fluid that's going to fall right off. We can maintain it. Uh, and, and that's, that's where the benefit lies. Now it gets trickier when we're talking about enhance, uh, because if they have additional, you know, additional hormones in play or heightened hormone status, then that's going to add to, you know, fluid fullness, all those things, right? Potentially. So in that case, it might be better to, they have their climb, 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 hold. They might want to hold, hold, hold. And then drop. If you can read that, it might be small. Drop hormones to baseline. Or we'll just put base hormones. We'll just put base baseline. Baseline hormones. Because again, you know, same deal. Go up, then they drop hormones and drop drop calories at the same time, that's a recipe to see that weight really plummet. And you might actually, granted, we know that muscle loss is not a, not really an easy thing to accomplish. It You can lose muscle for sure, but it takes a little bit more than what most people think. However, de, a decline in calories along with a decline in hormones simultaneously is not a good thing. So as you can see, baseline hormones, try to hold that weight. Now, I didn't really mention any type of time frames. Um, if you can minimum, we got to think if, if there's hormones included, you got to think of ester, right? Uh, it can take multiple weeks for you even to return to baseline. So if you're just doing two weeks or something, then you're, you know, you're, you're probably still seeing some artificial, um, uh, artificial weight there, I guess. But <clears throat> if you can hold for four, six, eight, or even more, if you can mentally tolerate it, then that, you know, that can be uh, beneficial in that regard. For the natural person, it's not going to make as much of a difference because hormones are already at whatever they're at. So the holding phase might be a little bit shorter. Maybe it's more in that four week or six week range versus the six or eight week range or, or whatever or more. And there's some context there. It depends on the person, how much they're eating, what their training's like and so on and so forth. But that's the premise behind holding phases for growth and not just flushing all your, you know, your new body weight down the toilet. Okay. Fat loss phases. Now, again, this isn't exactly science, but we know a couple things happen during fat loss phases. We know that there are, there is potential for metabolic adaption, especially the leaner you get. The longer calories are restricted, the more calories are restricted, the further away from your natural set point of body fat that you get, so on and so forth. So is there any benefit in holding a lower body fat for, for a longer period of time after 
the fat loss phase is over. Does that serve any benefit? Anecdotally, from what I've seen, I, uh, there are cases where I would say yes. There are cases where I would say no. It's probably going to make things worse. Um, the obvious one would be someone that has a lot of metabolic adaption, a lot of is really struggling to get to that weight, get to that body fat set point. They just, you know, am I going to want to hold in there for very long? Probably not. We want to get rid of those adaptions. We want to get them back to a healthy, um, you know, we got to get them back to a normal body fat set point or somewhere around that range, normal calories, normal metabolic function, normal hormones, so on and so forth. Now, that might be more like contest prep or a more extreme leaning phase or getting very far past this natural set point. Now, for a for a uh, general fat loss client that's not going to that extreme leanness, I can see some benefit here. So a typical goal, you know, a lot of people, they want to lose weight, right? They will lose body fat. They maybe have a goal in mind or we have... Or we get them to a point where they're happy. Now, if I just throw a bunch of food back in, let's say they want to be 130 pounds, they're probably going to shoot back up to 140, whatever. So kind of the way I would maybe approach this is I would actually try to bring them down a little bit past that. And then we have a little bit of wiggle room to add food in and maybe settle around that 135. So we go 125 and then slowly add food. You got some fluid and glycogen retention there, right? So they might settle around 130. Now, is that holding phase by definition? Maybe not, but that's kind of what, you know, that's kind of what we're doing. We're getting them used to, uh, we're getting them used to that set point. Now, that increased food can help somewhat with those adaptions, right? So maybe not necessarily exactly the definition of holding phase, but it's, the premise is similar. It's helping them acclimate to that lower body fat set point. Can you do that to um, a full extent with everyone? No, no, you can't. No, I, I don't believe that you can just, you know, if someone's naturally, uh, a female is naturally 20% body fat that you can bring them down to 12% and they can just maintain that without any type of consequence metabolically or hormonally. Now, if they're naturally 20% body fat because they overeat and they under-exercise, they do any of those types of things, then potentially. But if they are a healthy person around that set point, it might not be feasible to hold them at a much lower set point for long term without some type of, you know, down regulation, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, I, you know, I always tell people and try to get this through to people, well, you know, Think about what would you normally look like if you ate around maintenance calories and you exercised, you know, a reasonable amount. Would you be as lean as you are now? Well, no, not even close. Well, then there's your answer. It's probably not. Uh, it's probably not feasible to maintain that super lean physique all the time without some type of metabolic and hormonal consequence and potentially other things downstream. Okay, so... Health. What about for health? Well, your body likes homeostasis, right? And that's kind of what we're talking about with all this. Um, it likes that homeostatic set point. It likes things to not change that much. It likes to be comfortable. So at this point, there are um, a lot of times when I'm trying to, this is where holding phase is kind of in conjunction with a, something, a health issue or something that we might be trying to work on. Um, you don't necessarily like, let's think about, let's think about some of the stuff that I've been talking about on the other whiteboard chats. Um, you know, I talked about hormonal imbalances, spotting stress on lab work, hyperandrogenism, I mean, hypogonadism, stuff like that. Do you really think that it's going to be a good idea to try to work on those things while you're in a calorie deficit for a long period? Probably not, probably because prolonged deficit might have been half the reason that you're in the situation to begin with. So most of the time, we're going to want to be around maintenance or a little above maintenance. I know when I talk to people, uh, especially, you know, especially women that have a harder time with, you know, with body image, um, we talk about needing to increase calories and potentially add a little bit of body fat in order to fix some of these issues. 
they freak out. But I think it's important to realize that you don't have to blow up. It's that's not what I'm talking about. You don't have to eat way over maintenance. You just need to not be in a deficit, right? You just need to be out of a calorie deficit. So that's kind of what I'm referring to here. If you want to any type of issue that you're trying to correct in that regard, any of the stuff that I mentioned or you know things that are similar, it's probably going to be best to try to be around caloric maintenance or maybe even slightly above because you also need materials, right? You need materials for repair and for function. And if you're in caloric restriction, your body's trying to worry about that and maintaining other functions, it's not going to have the materials. So that's kind of what I'm talking about there. So guys, that's the gist of it. Um, that's the gist of holding phases in terms of muscle growth, fat loss, or health. Um, natural versus enhanced. Now, recomposition, I added this on here as just a special note. This would be potentially related to this or this. Um, you might see it in both cases. In select individuals, you might see them hold a higher body weight and get better around that body weight. You hear people talk about that. Uh, you also might see it here. Now, in a fat loss phase, when we're seeing that recomposition, a lot of what we're really seeing that looks like muscle growth is just probably, yeah, maybe it's lean body mass gain, but it's probably just water and glycogen filling out. And you're staying the same or close to the same body fat and um, looking fuller. So you look tighter, right? Because your skin's pushed out and you're not so depleted. So is that recomposition in the truest you know, form you could argue that it is potentially lean body mass, but it's maybe not necessarily like really solid muscle growth. All right, that covers the topic. I hope that's helpful for people. Um, as always, I have an intention with the video. Like I, I want people to be able to, to grow, lose fat, um, maintain health, and be able to retain these results to the best extent that they can. So again, don't push up your calories and really high and gain a bunch of weight in a linear fashion and then drop it right off immediately. Um, you may find some benefit in uh, general, you know, gen pop. You may find some benefit in fat loss phases and, and holding slightly or trying to improve around a, a certain body composition afterwards, maybe. Um, health phases, don't try to f don't try to go about fixing issues when you're in a calorie deficit all the time. It's probably not going to help. And natural versus enhanced, there are differences there, like I said. So hope that's helpful to you guys, and I will talk to you next time.